Okay, everybody. Um, want to? I'm going to do a couple more examples, at least one more example, at least of a proof by contradiction. But before I do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the logical structure of a proof by contradiction, um, because maybe that'll help clarify what's going on. So here's the deal. Suppose. So first of all, what is a contradiction? A contradiction is a statement which is always false. And usually they come about by using and to combine a statement with its negation. So for example, um, it's sunny out and it's not sunny out is always false. And C and for whatever statement C is, C and not C is always false because an and statement is only true if they're both true. But if C is true, then not C is false and vice versa. So there's no way that both C and not C can be true. So that's a contradiction. And if you're trying to prove A implies B by, by contradiction, then the strategy is to um, use the fact that if, if A implies B is true and B is false, then A is also false. And that comes from the truth table for implication. It's similar to the contrapositive argument, where the only way that an implication can be true with a false conclusion is if the hypothesis is false. Now, Sometimes our things that we're trying to prove don't necessarily look like implications. So remember the, the application we made of this was we said that the square root of, we wanted to prove that the square root of two is irrational. And that doesn't look like an implication. But when you unwind it a little bit, it kind of is an implication because what it boiled down to proving was the following. If A and B are integers, and a squared minus 2b squared equals 0, then a equals b equals 0. So written in this form, remember the idea was to find if, if the square root of 2 was rational, then it would be the case that 2 was equal to a over b. And um, so, I mean, uh, square root of 2 would be equal to a over b, so 2 would be equal to a squared over b squared, and from that you could get this equation a squared minus 2b squared, where b was not 0. So this, if, if the only way you can have a squared minus 2b squared equals 0 is if b is equal to 0, that's the same as saying that the square root of 2 is irrational. That's worth thinking about if it's not, uh, if it doesn't make sense. We, we kind of worked that out earlier. The strategy then for a proof by contradiction is you assume that your hypothesis is true. So our hypothesis here is that a, b are in z, and a squared minus 2b squared is equal to 0. And you assume that your conclusion is false. So you assume not both a, b are 0. And now you try to find a statement C, which is implied by this hypothesis, and also its negation is implied by that hypothesis. So what did we do? What we showed is that if we had a squared minus 2b squared equal to 0 with not both a and b 0, <clears throat> we were able to prove that b is even and b is odd. That was what our argument showed. So the statement C is that B is even and not C is that B is odd. So now we're in the situation where we have P and not Q implies an, a contradiction. So we have a hypothesis P and not Q, uh, an implication where the conclusion is false and the implication is true, the, the logic was valid. So therefore the hypothesis must be false. So P and not Q must be false. Well, uh, remember that not Q was that um, not both A and B are 0, and the P was that A squared minus 2B squared equals 0. So if P and not Q is false, um, and P is true, meaning that we have a solution, A squared minus 2B squared equals 0, then it must be the case that not Q, which was not both A and B equal, are 0, must be false. So Q must be true. In other words, A equals B equals 0. So that's kind of unwinding the, uh, the proof by contradiction. And um, partly because the reason pe people don't like proofs by contradiction very much 
are because, first of all, the logic here is complicated. And second of all, it, there's a magical element because the, in, in our case, the hypothesis that, the, that we found, the, um, the contradiction at least seemed to be related to the original um, problem. But um, oftentimes this, this um, extra contradictory statement just seems completely unrelated. And, um, and so people feel like uh, there's a little swindle here. But I, I, in, in, even though I'm raising these objections, I, I guess what I'm saying is it, it's considered good style to avoid proofs by contradiction if you can and use direct or contrapositive proofs instead. But they are perfectly valid from a logical point of view if they're done correctly. And so there's no reason not to use them in situations where they work nicely.